In terms of self-improvement, when you come from a place of honoring what is already going well, you are so much more likely to make lasting change. Hear me out. We're starting this off with a thrift haul. Hopefully, hopefully I find some good things. It's the last day of 2023. I'm just having my one last reckless thrift trip because I'm not planning to do this for the rest of the year. So, wish me luck. It was actually really good. I spent $20. Cheapest thing I got was $2.50. I needed some going out clothes because last year I kind of got rid of all of my going out clothes so that I wouldn't go out. You know what I mean? It's like if I had an opportunity, I'd be like, oh, I have no clothes. Can't go. So here's what I got. First of all, very early 2000s bag has these cute little cinch ties. I've been kind of tired of mini purses recently and I think the mini purse wave is kind of turning into a midi purse wave, like a medium purse. Got this one. It has gold hardware and stuff, which I don't normally wear gold jewelry but I like to mix and match gold and silver anyways like I have next okay okay hold on this mini skirt really wanted a denim one too I just could not find one this one like a taupe gray and then the stripes have like a silver metallic love it to go with it I got this white tank top it has sequins it's a really subtle detail it's a going out top it's a summer top it's everything and then this one it says I heart can and it has like bedazzled so that was all not too shabby that was my last spontaneous thrift trip of the year okay 2024 is purposeful planned thrifting only Happy New Year! I am in DC for the night. I got Mediterranean food. Oh my god, they have a little crossword puzzle on their napkin and that's so cute because I stopped in a bookstore. I almost was this close to getting a crossword book. Look at that. It found me for free. I got a bowl with a rice and greens base, falafel, tzatziki, hummus, onions, olives, feta, tomatoes, cucumber, I think that's it. I think tahini also. Kind of went crazy with the sauces, but I hate having a dry bowl, you know? I actually haven't eaten all day. I'm gonna eat and then come back. <laughs> Literally wasn't even that good. <laughs> okay, for God's sake, let's get to the New Year's resolution. In fear that I am going to spend this entire video yapping and yapping and yapping and yapping, there's just, there's so many points that I wanna make and I'm scared that they aren't gonna I don't know, I've just, I tried really hard to organize everything that I have to say, okay? If the advice resonates, it resonates. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm not saying this is for everybody. You know what you need to do. You know, regardless, this is what works for me, okay? I wanna be realistic and I wanna build off of what is already working. In terms of self-improvement, when you come from a place of honoring what is already going well, you are so much more likely to make lasting change. The new year, instead of it being a time to come up with 5 million different new things that you're gonna do, is a better time to appreciate what you've done and kind of use that as a motivation to gain a little bit more momentum that you sometimes tend to lose towards the end of the year. Habits take so much time and attention, especially when they are new. It's overwhelming, it's scary, and it's stressful to confront something new 
that you might not be good at at first. Last year, one of my goals was to be creative every day. When I think of some ideal version of myself, I list out qualities that she has. Along with those qualities, she has actions that give her those qualities. If my ideal self is a creative person, then I have to do creative things. I think it's hard sometimes for me to identify myself with the label artist. I don't know why. It's a conversation for my therapist, I think. Regardless, we tend to get imposter syndrome in the process of trying to improve something in your life. You get into it and you look back and you're like, whoa, I'm pretending to be someone else, you know? You can get overwhelmed with a huge idea. There's no way you can build something so large. Well, how do I want to say this? Like, a large identity is built off of small daily tasks. Something small every single day. Could be 15 minutes, could be five hours, could be 30 seconds. It doesn't matter. What matters is not how much time you spend in one day, but how much time you spend each day that compounds over time. This past year, I think I did really good. I wasn't perfect. What matters is that I started and I'm working and I'm in the progress. In order to really make your resolutions or goals seem super achievable, you have to figure out how realistically you could fit them into a daily schedule. That doesn't even mean that this daily schedule has to be done every day. Obviously that is the goal, but make a daily schedule with the expectation that you might not follow that to a T. Even if it's not every day, at least you have the framework and the schedule and something that you can fall back and rely on. Even after you've messed up, even after you've abandoned it, you've forgotten about it, whatever happens, it's there, it's written down, and you can always go back to it. You can always start over. I just want to emphasize that it's not how much you do, it's how often you do it. That was kind of crazy. Did that? Is that? <laughs> not how much you do, how often you do it. I feel like that could probably be debunked, but it's sounding really good right now, so we're just gonna like roll with it. Because then, yeah, okay, whatever. If that sounds stupid, don't tell me. Just let me live in my Delulu world, okay? Obviously, guys, I got my robe for Christmas. It has strawberries. Best thing ever. No more T-Rex blanket arms in the morning. Also got these mason jar ASMR mugs. This light is really bright. Is this distracting? Let me see if I can make some adjustments. What the hell? Hello? It's me. Come on. You know me. You know me. I was here last week. Come on. Please. Bro, oh, there we go. So I have a confession. Um, as much as I was yapping about January with a positive mindset, yada, 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 yada. The other night I was in bed. I was just overcome with this terrible, terrible, horrible, no good, very bad wave of everything that's ever gone wrong. And this actually happens to me every January, I'm realizing. It's an important part of January. I think January is a purging month. As much as we want it to be like a fresh start renewal, that really, 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 truly does not happen until spring, summer. I honestly feel like summer is more the time where I reset and rebirth and re whatever every year, way more so than it ever is in January. January and winter. January is just a dead time. It's a time to plan, it's a time to envision, but it's not a time to really act out yet. And metaphorically, there's also a lot of dead stuff in here that we need to get out. So I cried, just was crying. I was crying and crying and crying and crying and crying. Crying, I didn't even know. I haven't cried like that since something like was really happening. This was just like a crying over things that have happened that I thought, I thought I couldn't cry that hard about anymore. I don't know. It was, it was weird and uncomfortable. And then afterwards I was just sitting in shock with myself. I don't know, just don't put too much pressure on yourself if you end up revisiting a lot more negative things in January than you do build positive things because that is such an important part of the process. It's the worst part of the process. 
arguably it makes for the best results my friend texted me the other day and she asked for my tips on how to journal every day and if there's one thing i will say that you absolutely can start as a new hobby and completely dedicate yourself to beginning in january regardless of your purging or whatever i just talked about is journaling you absolutely 100 should journal every single day every single day i journal because there are just times in my life where i have obviously pictures and videos of myself but i have no idea on earth what was going on up here those memories are lacking context in a way like i don't remember parts of myself it's more important for me to remember how i was thinking and feeling at a certain time versus what i looked like and what i was doing i need to have both in order to fully be able to reflect a good motivation for me to journal every day about the most smallest stupidest stuff like last night i wrote what i was making for dinner what i was going to watch on tv and then the podcast i was listening to while i was making dinner grand scheme i'm totally gonna forget that's like such small mundane details but that tells so much about what's going on up in here at the time. Today I'm off. I really need to unpack the rest of my apartment. All my random things that are just laying around. Also, I think I'm seriously allergic to something in here. I need to get an air purifier. So that's what I'm doing. I'm staying committed to the things that have already been working for me. Washing my face twice a day. So yeah, happy January. Don't be discouraged if you sob a few times. It's fine. It's really fine. There's so much things you're probably holding in and they need to go. They need to go. That's why it's so empty and gross and cold outside because everything has went. It's so metaphorical. It's so metaphorical. Take your time. Be slow. Journal every day. If someone came and told you what the inside of you was about to grow into within a few short months, you would never believe them. But it will happen.